Okay, so the second question I received from Lab Muffin Beauty Science is how do we do? How do we do safety assessment uh, on a daily basis at Biorus? The safety assessment of a cosmetic product. And it's not that simple. It's a fairly complicated process actually, but I can try to make it simple and describe, summarize the main steps uh, as accurately as possible at least. The first thing to do is to collect information to end up with a clear composition of the cosmetic product because you know a cosmetic product is made of, uh, of many raw materials and each raw material is made of a number of ingredients present at some concentrations but also impurities and it's important to know the impurity profile of a, of a raw material and when we have collected all this information we have a, a very good idea of what's the composition the real composition of a cosmetic product what's the exact concentration of every single ingredient and impurity and once we have it we have this information we we can really do a good job and then what we do is for every single ingredient, every single impurity, we are going to check the toxicological profile. So normally when we investigate the toxicological profile, this is done once for all, because once you have the toxicological profile of an ingredient, it doesn't change anymore, of course. So what we call toxicological profile is basically a summary of the hazard we talk about hazard, the danger that represents an ingredient. And it covers several toxicological endpoints, as we say. So toxicological endpoints are, for instance, skin irritation, skin sensitization, carcinogenicity, mutagenicity, repeated, repeated dose toxicity study, developmental toxicity. Um, it can be hepatotoxicity. It can be all kind of toxicity. It's very important that we have a very good understanding of the toxicological profile, a very exhaustive way covering all toxicological endpoints of a given ingredient or impurity. So once we have this information, and typically uh, the information that we, we need is a quantitative information. And this quantitative information is what we call NOAL, no observed adverse effect level. This quantitative information is, for instance, 1000 milligram per kilogram body weight per day. And what does it mean, NOAL? So this is basically the highest concentration of an ingredient that caused no adverse effect. So typically it comes from animal studies. Uh, it's important to say animal testing is prohibited in Europe for many years and, and it's very good, by the way, but uh, animal, studies, animal studies have been conducted for decades before it is banned in Europe and it's important, of course, we can use this information because this information exists, so we, we have to use it. Uh, we use animal testing studies, we use uh, in vitro studies, so typically experiments that have been done on um, samples of uh, samples of uh, human skins. Uh, um, it can be done on uh, in vitro testing can be done on uh, on eyes of of cow, for instance. You know. Uh, comi coming from slaughtering house. So we, we don't kill animals anymore, but based on models, we can run uh, in vitro experiments that are highly predictive. So it's very useful. And more and more, we used in silico approach. So IT tools, sophisticated IT tools to uh, evaluate the toxicity, the toxicological profiles of ingredients. Uh, something we used quite a lot is read across trend analysis or QSARS. This is um, sophisticated methods that allow understanding uh, the, the toxicological profile of an ingredient. So you see, it's it's not very easy, and 
and maybe I will explain it in, in more details uh, at some point. But the idea is ingredient per ingredient, we have to evaluate the toxicological profile, which based on my example with the lion is really to understand what kind of animal we have in front of us. Is it a lion? Is it a ostrich? Is it a rabbit? You see, uh, the, the danger is not the same. So we have to qualify this danger. And once we have qualified this danger, we have to assess the exposure, the exposure scenario. So basically, what concentration of ingredient is going to be applied on the consumers? Typically, what's the quantity of a given ingredient? What's the quantity that will end up on the face of a consumer? Okay. And it's not that easy to calculate. Huh? It's a lot of equations. It's a lot of calculations, but we, we have to do it. And many parameters are taken into consideration. So um, how, many, how many times a consumer is going to use the product on average? Um, what quantity is going to be used? Is it pea size amount? Is it, is it more? Is it less? Um, and, and there are more uh, is, is it rinse off product? Is it leave on product? So all of that is going to have a, a great impact on the, on the exposure uh, scenario. And once we have a clear exposure scenario and a, a very good idea of how much of an ingredient is going to end up on the face of a consumer, we can really uh, compare the, the hazard and the risk. And as you know, sorry, the hazard and the exposure. And as you know, the risk is an equation. It's the product of hazard and exposure. And the goal is not to take any risk. So basically we are going to take the danger. We are going to divide it by the, by the exposure and we obtain what we call a margin of safety. And this margin of safety is at least 100. So the idea is we have to be absolutely sure that the exposure, um, the exposure to the consumer is much, much lower than the quantity that may cause, that may cause a danger that may, that may lead to an expression of a danger for the consumer. And, um, yes, that, that's, that's a very quick summary of uh, that's a very quick summary of what we do on a daily basis. We evaluate the danger, toxicological endpoint by toxicological endpoint, ingredient per ingredient. Then we evaluate the exposure of a given cosmetic product. And we are going via uh, complicated equations to, um, to mix the hazard and, and the exposure to quantify the risk. And this risk cannot be significant. So this is why we talk about margin, uh, margin of safety, to be sure that the, the risk that is taken by the consumer is very insignificant. I hope it was a good summary. And of course, uh, I'm happy to answer all the other questions of LabMuffin Beauty Science. Thank you.